I mean, since we're on this, I, I think um, you began by saying that we would be poles apart on everything, but I don't think we would on, on fundamentally on the language, on the importance of mm. tradition and culture. I think there is um, there is a lot of common ground between Conservatives and Plaid Cymru and, and other parties as well. I think we all recognise the importance of that. Mm. Um, and perhaps that's why politics in Wales isn't quite as... Um, uh, perhaps as abrasive as it might be in Scotland, because we have that shared uh, common ground. Now, every week on this show, we do our bit to show you that politics isn't quite as divided and polarised as the headlines might sometimes suggest. And we do that by introducing you to two political frenemies. That's politicians from across the political divide who get on with one another and have worked together for the common good. Now, this week, I am delighted to say prun halm da to a couple of Welsh frenemies. David, the Tory tornado Davis, uh, Wales Office Minister and Conservative MP for Monmouth in South East Wales. Uh, good afternoon to you, David. Good afternoon, prun da. <laughs> and also joining us is your political frenemy, Ben Lake, uh, Plaid Cymru MP for Ceredigion in West Wales since 2017. Ben, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Pramda. Uh, well, look, thank you both uh, for giving me your time this afternoon. Let's start with how you got to know each other. David, I'm going to start with you first. When did you first meet Ben? Well, I think it must have been about 2017, after the 2017 election, when Ben uh, joined the Welsh Affairs Select Committee. I think I'm right, Ben, in that? Um, would that be about right? right? Yeah. Yes. I think so, yeah. um, I was chairman of the committee and I, you know, I'm in my 50s. Ben is a fair bit younger. I won't give a, give away ages here. Um, and I wondered, I wondered what he was going to be like, you know, having, having uh, won the seat. Um, you know, people who are a bit younger, and he's a bit younger than me, tend to be quite uh, fiery. But actually, well, I suppose what I found, I learned a lot from Ben, actually. I'll say this to him now. Because he's, uh, he's very clever at asking the questions, the most pointed questions, in a very polite way. And uh, luckily, I was as chairman of the committee. I, I quite enjoyed watching him make ministers uncomfortable with this approach because they couldn't quite deal with it. You know, they're used to dealing with a bit of hostility and uh, a lot of shouting. And, and what they actually got was a loyally approach, which always uh, actually gets a better response. Um, so I think that's uh, that's when we first met, and I, I grew to respect him. But of course, now I'm on the opposite side of the table, being <laughs> asked the questions. So it's not quite as easy. For me, not quite as much fun anymore. But the friendship has yes. survived. Uh, uh, <laughs> ben, tell us about uh, this friendship, because, I mean, I'm looking at your sort of political beliefs, and on paper, politically, you you guys are the polar opposite. Uh, David's pro-Brexit, uh, committed unionist, uh, organised the campaign ag against uh, the Welsh Assembly for the referendum. Uh, ben, you are pro-Remain, pro-devolution, pro-independence. How on earth did this friendship begin? Well, <laughs> as, as you say, in many respects and on paper, uh, we're probably the most unlikely of, of uh, political friends. But uh, it, it all began, as, as uh, David correctly said, it was uh, one of the first meetings of the Welsh Affairs Select Committee that I attended back in 2017. And um, uh, I don't mind saying this now to David as well. He, he was a bit of a celebrity. Um, you know, he's a bit of a titan in Welsh politics. Everybody knows um, who David TC is. Um, and uh, so I wasn't too sure either what to, to make of uh, David because I had uh, listened to him on the radio, watched him on television and, and you know, was a very forceful, passionate debater. And I was, uh, yeah, perhaps a little bit uh, nervous about having really? to, to, to join the <laughs> same committee. But what I found is that although certainly um, David... Uh, continues to make his points forcefully and, and in in some of the debates and uh, now as a minister in particular um i often uh, find it quite daunting having to, uh, to ask a question of david because i know i'll get an answer and a half back um <laughs> well, i hadn't noticed that to be honest but uh <laughs> but I think so. if anybody wants to see an example of that i think one of the last uh, most recent sorry questions uh that i asked david i think it was in welsh uh, question time uh, about a fortnight ago or thereabouts and um, you know what, what's great about David is he thinks on his feet so when you get you get an answer you actually get an answer rather than a pre-prepared kind of response um, which is a is a good thing in many respects but if you're hoping to have a you know land a punch on him in the chamber then you're probably going to be disappointed um, the thing is, ben, that, that will probably also be my downfall at some point as well, because <laughs> I might give the answer that I'm not meant to give. Um, so, 
<laughs> That's why your questions actually make me quite nervous because um, because it's very easy to go off message and say something that uh, that you may believe but is completely against what you're meant to be saying and uh, and there ends your career. So I'll be joining you again when that happens. Now now listen, I want to I want to hear about this trip that you both ah. went to together in New Zealand because often in this uh, political frenemy slot we find that. Quite a lot of these friendships have blossomed on a trip, usually because uh, both people are part of the same committee. But and, and, and sort of a trip abroad seems to do wonders from bringing people together. Now, I want to hear about tracking down a Welsh pub uh, somewhere in New Zealand that you both spent uh, quite a, a good amount of time in. And there was singing involved, I believe, David. There was, there was a lot of singing. Well, uh, we didn't spend a... A huge amount of time. No, there. not all your time. <laughs> One evening after after a lot of um, work, uh, other work. But yes, this is true. We walked into um, what I think was the only Welsh pub in uh, New Zealand. I think it was in, um, where was it, Ben? Was it Christchurch? Or was it... Um, yeah, I think it was Wellington. 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 Yeah, Wellington. Wellington. Yeah, it was, yeah. Right. Yeah. We walked in there and Ben, were, ben was straight up to the bar. And what I remember was um, he ordered a pint or two, and 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 the guy in front of him turned around. It was an old mate of Ben's from school. Is that right? <laughs> and then and then it turned out about half of us had connections with people in that pub, um, yeah. and such was the evening that um, at some point later uh, in the evening, I found myself singing Welsh rebel songs with Ben <laughs> by a famous nationalist singer called Daffod Ewan. And afterwards, I woke up in the morning thinking, I hope to God nobody's got that on video because uh, because that won't look good for a Conservative and Unionist to be singing uh, the anthems of Welsh nationalism. It can only end badly for me. And, uh, and but I they think, must have liked us, yeah. And I, and I think I was also very pleased that there weren't any videos because if there had been, they'd have shown that actually David knew the words to all the songs and I didn't. So that would have also caused a lot of embarrassment. Yeah. You'd have had, you'd have had to join the Conservative Party. <laughs> I'd have had to have joined Plaid Cymru. So that could have been <laughs> interesting as well. But, but the other thing was, I'm grateful to you actually, Ben, because my I, I've, I've learned Welsh and um, you know I speak it to some, to some level, but obviously, Ben, you're a, a first language Welsh speaker. And at one point we had to uh, meet the Maori community and they made it very clear they wanted us to, to speak in Welsh, not English, with a translation, which was fine. Um, and I had to, to make a speech, that, that was okay. But I, I suddenly realised that uh, it, it, it's quite a complicated language to learn Welsh. You, know, you, can, you can say the wrong thing easily enough. I said to Ben, look, Ben, will, will you translate this for me into English? So Ben was, was of course, fine with that. And then, then a minute later, I said, uh, I said, look, if I make any mistakes, don't worry about the exact translation. Just make sure we please don't cause a diplomatic incident. And luckily, uh, Ben's translation was such that, um, that we didn't. I think we left... Um, a fairly positive response, and that, and that was more to do with Ben's translation than my Welsh, I think. Ben, you well, you, I, you had uh, David's entire <laughs> career in your hands at that very moment. <laughs> well, and, and I should also say that David is being very generous there, because one of the things that uh, I remember from that visit uh, to the Maori community, the uh, the Maori language commissioner um, was greeting us, and I don't think that they had many experiences of a of a political delegation from any country greeting them. 